Now, many of you might be thinking, how is this possibly biblical? I thought the Bible said all this stuff about dominion and we, can't we do whatever we want with the animals? Um, but whatever dominion means, and I think that's an important question to ask, and I almost always get asked about dominion. Whatever dominion means, uh, we have to say two things about it. First, whatever dominion humans have over non-human animals, it is given by God and is therefore an extension of God's dominion. And much that's revealed about uh, God's dominion we can find in Genesis 1 and 2. Um, pretty good place to start. Animals are pronounced good, period, with no mention of human beings at all. God, later on in Genesis 1, insists that humans eat a vegetarian diet. Animals, in Genesis 2, you flip the page, animals are brought to Adam, why? To eat? No, because it is not good man should be alone. Animals are revealed to be our companions, not our food. Of course, there's no suitable partner found among the animals. That comes later, right? Uh, um, sin, of course, screws everything up, brings with it violence and death, including God's permission to kill and eat animals, which comes in Genesis 9. The explicit permission is not given to Genesis 9, which implies that it wasn't there before, right? God had to say, I now give you permission before you didn't have it. And Isaiah is absolutely clear that the kingdom of God um, is one in which the lamb will lay down with the lion, the baby by the adder's lair. The Apostle Paul in the book of Revelation talk about a new heaven and a new earth. All of creation is redeemed in a peaceable kingdom of nonviolence. And in the meantime, we are called to witness to the kingdom of God. Uh, which involves respect for animals. One of my favorite things to mention about the early church is what got read back later as the Council of Jerusalem. Uh, the early church had to be thinking about, well, are we a Jewish movement? Are we something other than a Jewish movement? Uh, Paul was out there saying, hey, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ. And some people back in Jerusalem were saying, wait a minute, it's, you know, what about Jewish law? Jesus followed the Jewish law. Um, they had a council, um, and they kept about four provisions of the Jewish law the early church did, three of which had to do with concern for animals. So um, no meat with lifeblood, uh, the animal's lifeblood uh, still in it, uh, no meat that had been strangled, uh, and no meat that had been sacrificed uh, to idols. And I think the last one actually has quite a lot to say to us today. Uh, nobody believes in Jupiter anymore, but um, we do have our idols, uh, consumerism in particular, and I can think of no better example of meat that have been sacrificed to idols than the meat we eat from our factory farms.